Hello everyone, Juan, the pilot photographer here at Pilot Photog, and welcome to my second airplane bio. Today's video is all about that iconic yellow airplane, the Piper Cub, flown by Chase Watley. We will take a closer look at one of the most recognizable airplanes in all of aviation. So sit back and enjoy the ride. The Piper J3 Cub is one of the most important aircraft in all of aviation. With around 20,000 examples built, the Cub is in the top 10 most produced aircraft of all time. The Cub was introduced as an easy to fly and maintain aircraft and has trained countless new pilots in its 80 year history. First flown in 1938, the Cub is instantly recognizable by its yellow paint scheme and black lightning bolt running along the fuselage. A distinguishing feature of the Cub is its exposed engine along with the ability to fly with the side door and window open allowing for incredible visibility. A tandem two-seat aircraft powered by a four-cylinder engine, the Cub is not the fastest airplane, but an absolute joy to fly. Here are some specifications on the Cub. Chase was kind enough to give me a ride in his airplane, and I even got to take photos of another airplane from his Cub. And now, let's meet the pilot of this J3 Cub, Chase Watley. Okay, uh, it's a 1940 J3 Cub with a uh, Continental 65 on it. Uh, has a wood Cincinnati propeller on it, which is, in my opinion, the only way that a Cub should be. But you know, you have metal props on it as well. Um, all uh, the spar is wood on this thing, uh, so it's just wood wing with uh, a metal frame to it. Well, it, I should say I don't own it. It's a family airplane. Um, I was doing tailwheel training out at uh, Eagle Sport out here with uh, a guy named John De Janeiro. And I was starting to get into it. I was really digging it, and my father noticed a big interest. And we've always tried to find a good airplane, I guess you could say, to introduce us into airplane ownership. We've always been able to borrow airplanes, not own. Uh, and my dad happened to find this thing for sale, and he surprised me with it uh, in spring break, actually, when I, come, when I came home for spring break. Uh, he told me specifically not to go to the hangar that we have back home, so what did I do? I had to go see what it was that he was hiding from me. Lo and behold, I found this airplane sitting there and he's like, that's ours. Yeah. It's no performer. You know, you're not going to get something out of like an aerobatic airplane or you're not going to get the cruise of a of a long distance cruise airplane like a Cirrus or something like that. But man, it's just so much fun. You know, you're sitting around at 60 miles an hour or 60 knots, whatever way you want to put it. And it's just you and the airplane. And that's it. You know, you have your basic instruments and if a, a radio if you want it. And it's just you and the airplane in the air just hanging out. The best part about it is the, the home of this airplane is right around a thousand feet and below. So if you stay within that window, you really get to experience what this airplane is all about, which is just low and slow flying. And I, honestly, I haven't smiled as much in any other airplane than this one. Really the only way to go about doing that is to hop in the airplane and go. Uh, find yourself a good instructor. Find a, find a school or a club that will actually allow that to happen to facilitate that training. And then uh, just go for it. You know, and, and the one thing I will say is you don't know how dead your feet are until you hop in a tailwheel. Three, the guy that uh, that we flew with today, he's the one who introduced me to it, uh, who introduced me to gentlemen's aerobatics. Lo loops, rolls, hammerheads, you know, very basic stuff, just going out, messing around, having a good time, some inverted stuff too. And 
you know, he got, he got that confidence for me to go into, to start precision aerobatics, which is what Nikki has introduced me into, was precision aerobatic competition flying. And it's a thrill. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love it. It, it, you know, every time I think about it, I get this big smile on my face. But, you know, again, I always end up back in this thing somehow. I never get old of it. You know, partially it's just because I'm an aviation freak. You know, it, anything aviation, it, it, if it's got wings, I'll fly it. But, you know, again, this airplane just, it, hold, it holds a special place in my heart. Um, I've been to a couple of fly-ins. Uh, I went to Sun and Fun actually in this thing. That was pretty cool. Um, I've been to Merritt Island once or twice. That's always a really cool approach. Um, I'm currently trying to plan on going to Key West with this thing to fly all the way down there because that, that would be cool. Uh, other places, uh, I'm trying to think of in Texas, that would be a, a good example. A whole lot of grass fields that I could just rattle off. Uh, that journey, uh, <laughs> it was a massive undertake. It was a massive undertaking, really. Um, I finally had convinced my parents that I could go to school, get the grades, and have an airplane here and not get distracted at all. Uh, so we finally pulled the uh, pulled the trigger on it. And spring break of last year, not this year, but last year, um, is when I started the journey. It was about a two and a half day adventure, stops, I think it was right around 25 stops. Eight hour days, just nonstop, keep, keep on going east. The, the cool thing was not only the sights, you know, crossing the Mississippi was cool, doing all that sort of stuff was really, really cool. But the people is what really made the journey all worthwhile. Everywhere I went, there was always four or five people come out, look at the airplane going, man, this is a nice cub. You know, where are you coming from? I'm like, I'm coming from Dallas, and I'm in Louisiana or Mississippi. They're like, you came from Dallas? Where are you going? Florida. What? Are you kidding me? Are you nuts? It's just something that you don't hear about that much anymore of somebody taking this small airplane and going halfway across the country. Thousand feet average. I, I, and, and that was only for safety purposes so that I had a spot to land. Uh, the highest I went was 5,500 and that's just so that I could get the right winds. I was pushing 90 miles an hour on that one when I got up there. But, you know, an hour later I had to come down because I'm running out of gas. Well, right now I got the airplane for time building purposes because it's so doggone cheap. Uh, I'm burning four gallons an hour wherever I go. Heck, a, an hour of flying cost me 20 bucks to go fly. But eventually what we want to do is we want to do a full ground up restoration on this thing, get it down to the, down to the frame and build it up right. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger motor on it. But overall, I'd, I'd plan on making it the best cub out there. It's a really hard thing to explain uh, until you get involved, until you're involved in it, until you're in it and you get to experience it like you experienced this morning. Yeah. It's one of those things that, you know, all old pilots will always end up to something like this. Uh, and even new pilots end up in something like this. And what's really cool with airplanes like these is if they could talk, they would tell a way awesome story. Uh, you know, this airplane is 78 years old. Lord knows how many people have learned to fly in it, have flown in it, or even uh, got the aviation bug from it. Uh, and it's really cool to be able to be really a, a caretaker of this airplane at, at, the, at this time and being able to experience that. This guy who, uh, he always had flown fast airplanes, you know, and I, he owned a Bonanza. Uh, he was flying like 7.4s and he flew F-16s, I think, back in, uh, back in the military or something like that. He, he approached me and uh, a, a friend of mine here uh, saying that he'd always want to fly a J-3 Cub. And fortunately, I was able to do that. I let him sit in the front seat just 
because what he told me is he didn't want to get like flight training. He just wanted to go for the ride of his life. Yeah. And so we went up, we went down the coast, probably about 40 feet off the deck, just hanging out. And he had the biggest grin on his face. It was, it was really cool to see that somebody who, is, who has that much more experience than me still shares the same joy that I have for an airplane like this. And it, it was really cool because, you know, he had always said this, uh, this was his bucket list airplane and that he finally got to do it was the coolest thing that he had done. He said this thing was cooler than flying an F-16. Yeah, and I, 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 I'll, I'll debate that right now just because I don't have that experience, but it is a cool airplane. That's for sure. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. If you have an idea for an airplane or pilot bio you'd like to see, please comment below. Clear skies and tailwinds, and see you next time.